la création est une chose très bizarre. Baoki was born in Beijing in 1920. He always wanted to be an artist and to study art. So he succeeded to convince his father, who was a banker, to let him try to enter the Hangzhou Fine Arts School, uh, which was at the time the more modernist uh, school in, uh, in China. It seems that there was a hunger uh, to discover the classical European paintings in museums and uh, to mingle with the artists of the time and to be part of this revolution that was taking place in Paris. In 1946, he decided to go to France to uh, be able to enhance his training and to see uh, the original painting he only dreamed about. The only French word he knew when he arrived in Paris was Montparnasse. So he, he went into a taxi and just asked bring me to Montparnasse. Montparnasse was the heart of the artistic scene back then, where all the artists used to go and paint nudes and take classes. When he arrived, of course, he was quite unknown. He was one of the rare Chinese people in, in Paris. But in a very short time, he knew all the people you had to know in Paris, intellectual, musicians, poets, painters, and gallerists. He had his first uh, personal exhibition in Paris in 1949, so very quick. Uh, after he just arrived. The Western world was undergoing its probably its biggest revolution since the Renaissance, uh, which was the development of abstraction. But Wuki decided to keep on with reality and to and to, to be involved in the figurative world. And he started uh, developing a style very much inspired by uh, Paul Klee. And then he moved on to be integrated into the art informal movement. And it's only in 1954 that he created his first abstract painting, Vent, Wind, and which is now in the Centre Pompidou. And nothing is linked to the wind because he wanted to represent something that you cannot see, something that you can only feel. And what he was interested in is just to figure out how you can represent the wind. He went back in China in, for the first time in 1972. The China he discovered that there was no comparison with the China of 1948. But that reconnected him with the Chinese roots, with the Chinese tradition, the Chinese landscapes. And that's also something that brings him to uh, paint differently. It changed his way of painting oil painting. Uh, you see a lot of uh, fluidity, a lot of more uh, free movements into his old paintings from this period until uh, the end of his life. He is more mature and um, he masters the texture of the oil uh, from thickness to fluidity of the ink. Today, he is recognized by the institutions, the museums, and the private collectors as a master of the 20th century. He was one of the first who tried to mix Asian traditions with European modernism. And in that sense, he is a, probably one of the first truly international artists. 